It's a wild, wild through a goal. Slots it beyond Fodringham. And the Millers are in front in the South Yorkshire Derby. Oh. And for the first time in 42 yes. years, yes. Fodringham United win at Bramall Lane. On the edge of the box, the Dolphin. He can hit them. And he does. Oh. No! Hello everybody, welcome back to New York Talk, this is the Rotherham United podcast and for the first time in what feels like a year we could talk about a Rotherham United win, uh, a 2-1 victory at home to Millwall, um, relegation is not confirmed just yet, um, but it will be soon, um, but yeah we'll talk about a win, it's, this might be a weird episode for everybody but yeah we won um, and then we'll preview, we've got a game, another game to, to bring us right back down to earth, we've got another game coming up to it tomorrow. <laughs> So that's uh, the Rotherham way. Mick, how are you doing? I'm all good, mate. Thank you. Are you? Yeah, I'm very, very good. Uh, Danny's back. How are you doing, Danny? I'm good, thank you. How are we all? Very good, mate. And Joy's back. How are you doing, Joy? I'm fine, thank you. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. We've got YouTube user Sarah Ogden, John Inslet, Michael L. Darren Cook, Harry IFC with us at the moment. Um, yeah, let's get straight into it. Um, Joy is a win. We won a game for the first time since Boxing Day 2 1 against Millwall. Um, a nice bonus. I mean, it doesn't really matter because it's because of the state of the season, but it's a nice bonus just to have that sort of just something to smile about finally. Well, it just puts off the inevitable, doesn't it? To yeah. be brutally honest. <laughs> and I mean, I think like the rest of us, I'm so glad A, we got it out of March, and B, we didn't go down on April Fool's Day. So <laughs> both of those are win win as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I mean, we rode our luck, I think, quite well. Mm. Um, but the win's a win, and we're still in the championship at this point. <laughs> Well, technically a championship club. Um, mm. um, our guy Life are with us. The uh, Green Mac Podcast, thank you boys for being with us. Pam was with us, Steve Grundy. Shelly said we finally won a game. It almost felt pointless. Uh, is it bad? <laughs> is it bad to feel like that? And Phil says, uh, I, nice to, we saw Phil before the game in Mick Sports, Mick. It might be a good look. We might be right, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and if, if Shelly said they make it felt a bit pointless after the game. The game was funny. We'll talk about the game specifically later, but the atmosphere was odd. I said to you, it kind of felt like a almost a pre-season game or kind of like a Papa John's game. That from Millwall fans as well. This is only necessarily just to dig at Rotherham fans, but it was an odd, odd atmosphere and there was an odd feel to the game um, from start to finish. Really, yeah, it was. It was. Um, the yeah. I mean, what else can you say about that? The, the atmosphere was as it as it has been probably for much of the season. Really dour. There hardly anybody there. Uh, and the Millwall fans tried the hardest with some really complex singing to try and bring the atmosphere up. Um, I don't know how they remembered our words, to be honest with you. That was uh, really good, really impressive. Um, but, I mean, that didn't work either. So, um, yeah, it's hardly a surprise, is it, given the situation that we're in um, and, and the situation Millwall are deservedly in as well. So, um, yeah, poor it was in that respect it was poor. everything quite a lot about that game was poor yeah um John says i can't make it for a couple of weeks and danny's moved house and we both won again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i thought you were going to mention that you upgrade your beer from carlin to madra i thought i might have please john uh you upgrade, I might upgrade your beer uh but danny just your general thoughts on the game well, we'll talk about the specifics later in a minute but the general thoughts on the game and your feeling feeling sort of post game <coughs> um my feeling during the game was, you know, it were two teams down the wrong end of the table, and yeah. like like Mick said, it wasn't very good. To be honest, the, the quality of football wasn't very good, um, and I think the vast majority of New York Stadium already gone. Well, odds are on that we're going to go down today, so we'll just go and sit and watch football for a bit. But um, I think, in all honesty, the result surprised us. I think we were so used to turning up and capitulating under the slightest bit of pressure. Um, I think a lot of fans were expecting, you know, another two, three nil at half time. Um, but went in at, at nil nil, not too bad. And then suddenly we've scored first, which, you know, we've not scored in what were it, six games before that? 
Could be either last time. Yeah, four, uh, uh, five, six games, something like that. Um, and tremendous strike from Revan, by the way. Um, and then when Millwall scored, it like normal service resumed. And I still don't know how much Charlie White meant that goal, but we've come away with a win, and it's nice to be um, the final. Um, the final hurdle that now every single team in the EFL has won in 2024. We were the last last ones not to, but now we've joined the pack suddenly. Um, joined the but, pack yeah, a bit. It, it, <laughs> it makes it sound better than it is, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but now it, it's... My overall thoughts of the game, it, it's about damn time. That's <laughs> my overarching feeling. Yeah. Very fair. Right, like I said, I mentioned Joe Minigo. We rode as luck. We relied on a certain Swedish bloke uh, to keep us in the game. He, he did his general thing. And uh, when you when we're at the bottom of the league, you need a little bit of luck. You need a player or two to have really good performances. And Victor just kind of, kind of as he's done for like 95% of the season, just sort of kind of stood up and said, I'm going to try and help us this time. And, it, and he, he didn't single-handedly win the game, but he played a huge part again. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Victor's been... Uh player of the season hands down mm. there's nobody gonna hold a candle to him on that I don't think this season I mean we'd have ended up with minus 23 if it wasn't for Victor <laughs> wouldn't we let's be honest um I mean the goal difference would have been like double at least mm. and it's a shame in a way because he's these what is it four years he's been here five years nearly um mm. What a signing. And mm. you look back to those early days and think about Jamal Blackman and his red gloves and how Victor didn't get in the team then. And mm. since he came in and cemented his place the um, season before last, it, it's been absolutely wonderful. And if and when he goes at the end of this season, he goes with all our blessings and best wishes as the legend and icon that he, he is and will be for the future. Mm. Uh, I think I'm speaking for the majority of Rotherham fans when I say that. Mm. But Revan had a good game, didn't he? Mm. Uh, mm. I mean, he scored one and he set one up. You can't really do much better than that when you score two goals. And for us to score two goals, again, is... Uh, when did we last score more than one? <laughs> uh, oh, there. Ipswich, wouldn't it be? Oh, yeah. 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 It's such a way. See, I've answered my own question. So, yeah, I mean, small step. I mean, with Rotherham at the moment, it's one step forward, 3,000 steps back. But it's a win. Yes. Mm. <laughs> it's a win. And we're all thinking, yeah, great. But you can't get too excited about it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's why. That's why. That's another way. It feels like a preseason or a Papa John's game where we've won. It's like, yay! There's no, <laughs> there's no, there's no further to it, is there? Really, that's another feeling. Um, yeah. Uh, Nathan Crabtree says, "Hi all. We finally won a game, and I think there's Millwall fans fi are finally taught that tense a lesson." Ah, uh, that pesky fence. That pesky fence that ends halfway down. Um, yeah, Mick. Let's talk about Seb Revan. Shelley says, "Seb Revan is that the, his best game for us? Do you think he'll come back next season?" He also said we look better with Bramall at the back too. Um, it was back three to start with the Reverend, I think, if I remember rightly, as Reverend as, as a as a left side of a centre half. Um, I think we've all kind of said this. I, I do like Reverend. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to like about Sir Reverend. He's a he's a very versatile player. He's got mistakes in him because he's a, he's, a, he's a youngster who's not had that much first team action. Um, but he does better on the right hand side. <laughs> he does better in right wing back than he does anywhere else. Yeah. I think we're back to the Blackburn game where he put that cross in for the Tom Eves, Tom Eves goal. Um, this kid's got some quality, to be fair to him. Yeah, he is. He has, and he won't be. He's not going to be on on Villa's books for. No. Uh, you know that's that's why he's there. So um, yeah, he's he's a quality player, and he's, he's as you pointed out there, he's still got a lot to learn. He's a young lad. He's got a lot to learn. Um, another season out on loan, probably in League One, might do him uh, do him world of good. Um, I don't know what his contract situation is at Villa, to be honest with you. Another year. Um, it's gone another year, so um, I'd, I'd love I'd take him back in a heartbeat, in an mm. absolute heartbeat for next year. Um, I, I suspect if he's going to stay at Villa, he'll, he'll want to he'll want to play his trade back in the Championship again. But we'll have mm. to wait and see. But yeah, he had a really really good game. 
Um, as you said, is he has got a mistake in him, but which defender hasn't, you know? Um, and then, and we've said it before, in the position that he plays and any mistake he makes is accentuated because it, it puts you in danger, immediate danger, rather than uh, rather than a striker looking forward to it. So, um, uh, sorry, a, a striker making the mistake. Um, so, yeah, we're, I, I thought he played really, really well and deserved his goal. Deserved his goal. It was a good strike, good finish. Um, yeah. And a decent cross as well. Decent cross for the for the assist. So, yeah, I, I like Seb Revan a lot. Mm. Yeah. We do have a cross in today. We've seen that when we mentioned the um, the, the Tommy Eves goal. But the shot was a surprise to me. I shouldn't be surprised because left foot has always been able to seem to be able to shoot. It's just a thing they seem to be able to do. Um, but he took it really, really well. Um, and it's good that he scored. But it, what is frustrating is that we seem to lack the ability or the mental strength to just shoot. That's all I want you to do. Mm. Shoot, you shoot, you score goals, and I, I, it wasn't it wasn't a massive risky shot. But we've not been taking those risks in recent weeks, and like they took it really well, really well, and keeper's got no real chance really for that one. No, it's a fantastic way to score your first senior goal as well, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, a- absolute quality strike. I mean, well, to be fair, we said that with um, with Lembakisa earlier in the season. That was his first goal, and an absolute scorcher. Mm. Um, and Revan's done the same. But yeah, you've you've highlighted something um, that. We've said on the podcast numerous, numerous times, we like the confidence to shoot properly. You know, um, it's, it's it's a bit like a guitar with a broken string at the minute because we keep harping on about it and nothing's been done about it. And the strikers almost seem scared to do what their position warrants, which is to shoot. You know, it feels like Tom Eves is the only one who has a crack when he gets the ball out from under his feet. Um, and... I think a few other players can take lessons from Seb, Seb Revan. If the space creates itself, have a go. Mm. You know, we're into the last, what, six games of the season now for us. Um, why not have a go from outside the box? You know, because we seem to dawdle um, on the edge of the 18 and just do nothing with it. Whereas Revan's just gone, you know what, I'm going to hit this. And he has, and he scored. Fantastic achievement for the lad. Fair play to him. Um but it's also laid down the gun for everybody else, like, right, who else wants to have a go from outside the box? Mm. Um, because it feels like the goals that we've got so far have been more on the side of um, Charlie White's goal, you know, where it's just like they've got a little bit of luck behind them and it's gone in, whereas mm. you could tell Revan meant it. Mm. Um, and I want to see us do it more for the last six games. Because let's face it, we're not we're not staying up now. You know, we have to win every single game and score something daft about thirty nine goals. It's only a thirty nine goal goal difference swing, Danny. I mean, what's your Yeah, yeah. I mean we only have to score just between six and seven goals for the rest of the season per game. Fine. What about you know, negative, Danny. Too negative, mate. <laughs> hey, Reverend might get them all, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so he says, look what happens when we get the balls into the box, amazing, isn't it? This is something we have done over the last couple of weeks, to be fair, Joey. Uh, it has, there has been a change over the last two or three weeks where we have started putting the ball into the box a little bit more. Monday was when it kind of, kind of paid off, finally. Um, but it does seem we are, Liam Richard does want to go towards getting the ball in the box and go back a little bit in terms of how we've played, uh, sort of pre Matt Taylor, get the ball into the box, or be a little bit more adventurous. Um, that's that. That's what's what we like, in it. We love crosses into the box. That's that's. If, if we had an identity, it would be crosses into the box. That's kind of what we like. Yeah, I was just going to say the same, Matt. That is our DNA, isn't it? Mm. Or it has been recently uh, since uh, one has been in charge, at least. And if we're going to be going down to League One, is that the way we need to be playing going forward? I don't know. Mm. Has League One changed in the oh the season that we've not been in there? Um, but it worked, didn't it? Or it was that Millwall's deficit, I don't know. You'd think playing Rotherham, the tip to the fact that that's the way that we play. And if you cut off mm. our um, wide players and, and not get the ball in the box, then basically that's us stumped for mm. goal opportunities nine times out of ten. Because we haven't got many, you know, we don't play up through the middle and like nice little passing triangles around the edge and slipping somebody in. We've not done that basically since we had someone like Barlasa in the team who mm. had that skill and technique to do that, to find that killer pass. We haven't got that person anymore. So 
we've got to pay for, play to our strengths. And when you look at White, you look at Eves, their stock in trade is, are, is, is as a number nine, a, a, a forward number nine, which is to be in the middle to get your head on the ball. Um, and that's what happened on uh, Monday. I was going to say Saturday, but it was Monday, wasn't it? And I think you're right, Danny. I think I'm not sure whether Wyke was aware of what he'd done or whether it, it hit, hit him because it was, it came at such a pelt, didn't it, that cross? Mm. So I'm not sure whether he couldn't get out of the way of it and it just caught him right. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say he meant to do it. I'm not so sure, though. <laughs> like a true striker, I'm absolutely certain he will claim he meant to do it. That's what, that's what strikers do. Um, let's talk about the white goal, Mick. It's it's a wonderful ball by Revan. It's just it's it's a ball that keeper can't come for. It's at the wrong kind of height for the defenders to properly attack it. Uh, and White's done what a good striker does: gets something on it. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's his arse, his elbow, his, his head. He got something on it. Um, and I do I don't know whether White's a, a, a confidence player or not. But tomorrow will be interesting to see how his then performance goes on after getting that goal. The first one, obviously, since January, since he signed. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've obviously since the post match, I've had the opportunity to watch it back, and when when it when it hit the back of the net, I just could not stop laughing. <laughs> I, I just found it utterly hilarious. In my head, what I'd seen was the ball bounce off the defender and hit Charlie Wyke on the back <laughs> of the head going in the net. That's what I saw. Um, that's obviously having watched it back. That's clearly not the case. Um, and and I, I kind of owe him a bit of an apology because I, he's, 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 he's meant to head the ball in the back of the net, clearly. Yes. You know, how, how he's actually done it, uh, there's, a, there's certainly an element of luck in there. But, you know, he's, he's achieved what he, what he aimed to do, mm. uh, and, that's, and that's put it in the back of the net. So it's, I'm not saying it's a fantastic finish, but he's it's, it's, it's done very, very well. He's done well to get to it. To, to turn his defender, to turn his man as the cross has come in and done well to get something on it, albeit it, it like I say, it's sort of the, the back of the back of the top of his head, isn't it, that um, that, that contacts the ball. So yeah, it's it's not going to win goal of the season, but it's not the it's not the uh the lucky bounce that I thought we finally had this year. So still uh, one, man. So again, we're still jewel, yeah. 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 Um, listen, he's got himself in the right place. He's got himself on the end of a cross, and he's put the ball in the back of the net. It's exactly what you want from a striker. And as you as you rightly say, hopefully he'll get some confidence from that. And uh, maybe with a bit of luck, fingers crossed, he might get some more balls put into the box as well. Who mm. knows? Yeah, who knows? Joshua yeah. Caswell says it's all that confidence. Look at Eves. At one point we were laughing at him. Now we're starting every game. Uh, yeah, I think it's true. And I think, Danny, that it's strange because I thought we played well up until when White came on. I thought well, Eves and Nombe played well together. I thought Nombe had a, had a very, very a decent game. I was surprised he came off when he did turn out to be a great sub. Mm. But that's interesting that all three strikers who played had basically a positive impact on the game. Eves was probably the, the less impactful, but he still had a decent enough game, didn't he? So it's we've now got a bit of competition. That's, that's new. Yeah, it is. It's a shame the competition won't happen in, in February, though, isn't it? Well, um, yeah. but no, it's um, baby steps, Danny. It's baby steps. Yeah, it's baby steps for next season. Yes. That's what it is. Um, because, well, two of them are contracted, and I have a suspicion White's going to come back, but we'll wait and see with that one. Um, but yeah, just to echo what Mick says, it's a great confidence booster for Charlie White. Um, you know, he's, he's had his struggles before, and Richardson's highlighted that and brought him here. And I have. A lot of respect for for White because he was one of the few players who wants to be here, you know. Mm. Because um, it was it was the advertiser this interview where um, a lot of people Richardson said a lot of people turned their noses up at joining Rotherham mm. uh, in January, but Charlie White goes, yeah, I'm up for that. Um, so I have a lot of respect for him for that. He's not really hit the ground running per se, but maybe this goal gives him that confidence boost. Um, I'd, I'd just love to see Nombe chip in with a few more as well. Um, and then the strikers who are available to start matches can all be firing on all cylinders. Maybe that's a wish for the start of next season now. Um, but, yeah, like I say, Nombe um, started the game, had a really good impact. Um, Eve was really positive as well. Maybe less impactful, but he still put himself about. Um, 
but he's not the sort of centre forward to chase after stuff. That's more Nombe's job. Mm. Um, and then when White came on, like you, I questioned why Nombe's gone off. I was expecting he's to go off personally. Mm. Um, but it ended up being a really good sub. And um, I think it was White's better performance in a Rotherham shirt, I think. Mm. Um, and we'll have to see what happens over the summer and whether or not he comes back. Because I think his contract's up in uh, June, sure, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty sure, yeah. Watch this space. I reckon he's going to come back. He's on a lot of money for League One. What would be League One? Mm. Uh, so but would he drop it for Richardson, though? Well, well that's it, isn't it? Uh, maybe at a stage of his career, maybe he's earned, he kind of, not earned his money, but earned what kind of, and then he can drop his wages a bit then. Mm. We'll, have to, we'll have to wait and see. Um, Andrew Witham says, White nudges the defender out of the way before flicking the ball thought he meant it. Uh, Phil says, for a guy his size, he, does, he wins very little headers, I he doesn't win maybe as much as he should. Uh, Sam Davis says, the first season we passed forwards more times than backwards. A more positive game says he's got his stayed. Josh Caswell says 10k a week. is the, That's the rumoured wage of, of White. Whether we're paying it or not, I'm not certain, to be honest with you. Uh, but that's his rumoured wage. Um, but Joe, these three strikers that we've got at the minute are potentially, if, we, if we're saying White might be here next season, these three are going to be guys that are going to be here next week. Even non are both still in contract for next season. So this is the kind of area of the pitch where it's really it's good and important that these are getting a connection. Because in defence, we could see loads of departure midfield. We will see loads of departure. But those three, plus maybe maybe one other, that's probably going to be a league one strike for us. So that, that is an important area to maybe see, hopefully, see those links strengthen between now and the end of the season. And that's where I would suggest that all three of these guys' as experience is, that probably is their level in league one mm, yeah. going forward. So... It might be a positive going forward, but I think I agree with what Danny and Mick have said. Let's use the remainder of the season to get these partnerships up and running, to get some understanding and to get some idea of what Richardson's planning as his template for next season with those that are going to be here. Let's use these games. Let's not just let the season peter out to nothingness. We, mm. you know, we can use them. We know the inevitable is going to happen, but let's just not leave it uh, to to go as a damp squib. We can use it as a, like I say, a blueprint for next season, hopefully. And you know, these at least two of these three guys are going to be key to that. And we've already touched on the fact that wide Pelé looks like it's going to be key. And then again, that would impact on what our recruitment's likely to be in those wider positions, as well as we know those who are likely to believe. Obviously, we're going to have a... Well, we aren't going to have a defence, are we? I don't know who's under contract <laughs> next season in defence. And yeah. midfield's going to look a bit holy as well. So, mm. you know, it, it's a big summer coming up, but these at least two of these guys at the front are going to be there. So let's see what understandings they can develop in these next few games going forward. Mm. Uh, Josh Caswell said, White reminds me of Michael Smith in League One. You give him a ball worth fighting for and he will get on the end of it. Uh, Chris Teller says, we don't need another expensive 30-year-old striker. Well, you said that. I think if everybody got offered Michael Smith back in League One, you'd probably take him, who is an expensive League One striker. <laughs> um, so... Let's wait and see what happens. Let's wait and see what happens uh, in terms of that. Yeah, Andre Green, my call. Andre Green is another yeah, one yeah. as well. I see him more potentially as a wide player, but let's wait and see with that one. I think he'll, he'll be a very useful player in League One, I suspect, Andre Green. Um, John Morell says, I am surprised you managed a shot. Listening, <laughs> listening to the rat-faced Harris, you would have thought <laughs> you would have excused to believe in that you were playing prime Barcelona on Monday. I'm yeah, surprised Mick. the next person to answer is Mick. Perfect question. <laughs> it's like it's planned or something, Danny. Um, <laughs> Who's planning? Never. <laughs> um, how, don't go out Millwall, Mick, because we don't often wind... Do not, do not, do not try to wind opposition fans up on, on this podcast, but I, I wonder if Neil Harris watched a different game to me because they were as bad as we've seen this season. I mean, since some Millwall fans' reaction, I think they're the same as us. They were terrible on the day. And they certainly didn't deserve the win. You could maybe argue a draw. They didn't deserve a win. No. I mean, it's probably scared all in 14-year-old Stone Islanders in, in the <laughs> other end, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about after game in a minute. But, um, yeah, I mean, he, he, the, the man is just a clown. If he if he actually believes what he said, he said in that interview, which I can't for one minute think that he, believe that he does think that's true. Um, he's a clown. 
Nobody deserved to win that game. It was awful. It was awful from start to finish. You know, you could, well, the score suggests that we were marginally the better team. Nah, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. But there is a reason why Millwall are where they are in the division. And that reason is that they're crap. Uh, it's as simple as that. You know, they are even, even, they eclipse even Bristol City for being the worst team that we've played at New York Stadium this season by some considerable distance. Clueless. They were clueless. They were Huddersfield a couple of weeks ago. So Huddersfield were bad. Well, Huddersfield were bad, but they had that decent player who got sent off. Yeah. You know, they had they had at least a spark. Yeah. Millwall had nothing, nothing at all. The only thing that they had was they were decent on corners. Mm-hmm. And they're only decent on corners because they've got that big lump who, who, uh, back who throws everybody about. You know, no, yeah. they were they were they were dreadful, absolutely dreadful, genuinely. And 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 again, as I'm not saying that just to try to wind anybody up. They were awful. They were the worst team that we've seen at New York Stadium this season, including us. So what what on earth Neil Harris was talking about? He's just trying to appease. He's trying to. Yeah. He's trying to make you know make his players look better than they actually are in front of his moron fans. So, whatever. I'm not well, trying to wind up their fans, but I'm going to call them morons. Well done, Nick. <laughs> not all of them. Okay. Uh, I like to tell says. I'm shirt today in, in honour of him. Look. <laughs> Uh, don't really say, ironically, it was sort of games that got Harris sacked at Millwall. I can see why they brought him in for that kind of performance, that kind of gritty, horrible performance. That will put your wins as it, as, as it has done. Um, but yeah, they were they were they were terrible, Danny. And did you think we deserved the win at all? Or would 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 a nil nil have been a, probably a fairer result? Um, I think we played no better than the game against Huddersfield. So I think mm. a nil nil or some sort of draw would have. Um, encapsulated the game more, but um, I think I think the in, in my opinion we deserved the win just because we've not had one for ages, and that's the only reason why we deserved the win. It's not how we played or how we lined up or anything like that. Just because we, we, we yeah we were due one basically. Um, but I agree with Mick. I don't know what game. Um, Neil Harris was watching because it wasn't the one that he was asked the question about quite clearly. <laughs> didn't, he say that, didn't he say they did enough to win three games of football? It's like you've, you've not even done enough. You've not even done enough to win a half of football. You know, honestly, I don't know what game that is. He watching it with like sunglasses that have got like a minute slit in the <laughs> middle so he can just see what's in front of him. Because I don't know where he's got pulled the comments from. Because I don't think we did enough to win the game. No. Other than score more goals than Millwall, which is the basics of football, score more than the opposition. Mm. But other than that, we didn't play very well. We just, by some miracle, scored more than Millwall. Yeah. <laughs> it's just I find it's funny to listen to us saying, we won, but we were still rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> How did the fans do that? <laughs> um, Josh Caswell says, it's just annoying because we beat him at Priestfield and, and relegated his Gillingham team. Uh, which they don't have to, to get sacked from. Um, we're in bogey team, that's what it is. <laughs> sort of like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ironically, we're probably the worst team that Millwall has seen at home this season. That's 3-0 yeah. defeat in September. And they're yeah. one of the worst we've seen. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it delayed the inevitable joy. We needed a win plus a couple of results to go our way, which, which they did. Um, did it? Ma- does it matter? Does, does, in terms of the grand scale of anything, we're 18 points left, 18 points left to play for with 39 worth goal difference. Does it matter or is it just football? <laughs> well, like I said at the beginning of the podcast, to me it mattered because I didn't want mm. us to go down in March for a start. I just think that's awful going down in March. <laughs> it's dreadful. And I didn't want us to go down on April Fool's Day for the obvious reason. <laughs> so for me, yes, it did matter that we won and that we didn't go down this Easter weekend. We live to fight another day. We're probably going to go down on Saturday instead. But, you know, that's, you know, comparatively well into April, isn't it? And we'd yeah. like, I mean, are we going to be the first team to be relegated? Is it between us and Carlisle? 
possibly. Yeah, it wasn't Carlisle, mm -hmm. so probably it was. Yeah. So, I mean, right, yeah. perhaps it might be nice if we could just hang on and not be the first team to be relegated. I quite yeah. like that. And then, you know, let the inevitable happen. But, uh, mm. yeah, I mean, it does matter. I mean, it's been an awful season. I mean, and it's not long since we had a similar season. And another yeah. thing is, at least we've got up to that 23 point. Mm. Yeah, yeah level yeah. and we only need one point to not be the worst ever or to equal the worst ever which is the record that we had previously so you know we're we're on to bettering ourselves as it were so yeah yeah i mean i don't want us to go down with 23 points maybe we can do 24. <laughs> but you know it's just little things like that as a fan that you, you know you know that it's been an awful season you know that there's not an awful lot that can be said about it to bring a smile to fans' faces this year. Because for me personally, I found it been well, since Matt Taylor went, I found that I found myself to be very disconnected from the club. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'm the only fan no. that feels like that. The time it took for uh, Richardson to be put in place, the January transfer window, such as it was, and like you say, we were already in a position then where people who may have considered joining us said no, as we've done is touched upon. So it's just been one thing on top of the other. And, you know, we've got to have a little bit of self-respect at the end of the day as fans mm. and as a club. So, you know, these little wins as they are mean something. Well, they do to me anyway. Mm. Yeah. I agree. Um, shall I say it's not going to happen? But imagine when the last few games of the season are going down on goal difference. How annoyed would you be that you've left it that late? Yeah, I said to Mick on I think I watched when we were watching the Preston game that when Rotherham win, when they, when they play well, it's a bit like when you've got kids when they behave. It's like why can't you just do this all the time and just be, win all the time and be better all the time? Um, so I kind of I'm kind of glad that we won by playing badly because I don't have to you know I don't have to pine for a performance that was never going to happen again. Um, and Mick, do you want to talk about the after game after game fence fight or do you want to give some ref praise? It's or like praise? just I, I I don't know whether I've not been on social media this week. So I've been busy at work. I've not particularly been on there. I don't know whether anybody's put it on, but it's like that that meme with the two dogs at the gate, isn't it? That's exactly <laughs> what it were like. You know? um, That's a perfect description. I love that. <laughs> just pathetic, pathetic specimens of children. Um, honestly, I, it's just, I don't know, I don't know, I mean, yeah. It, 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 yeah, it's what you expect from certain sections of of every club, really, um, it's just that Millwall seem to be, have a bigger section, not bigger in size, I mean, just bigger in quantity, bigger in number, because uh, they're all, like I said, about 14 off the Don Coke and dressed in Stone Island, aren't they, you know, pathetic little boys. Really are, and then they and then literally you walk twenty yards past that fence, and there's no fence, and no one happens. It's like, I mean, oh god, it's just horrible. It's horrible, horrible, horrible. Um, but yeah, great to see, great to see. I'm disappointed at losing against the bottom of the league. Beautiful, a beautiful thing. What I enjoyed yeah, was that. I'm not, I'm not going to all, all celebration, please. When they went 1 1, they tried giving it big and at family stand. I'm like, yeah, you equalised. You're the worst team in the league and you're giving it the big end. I mean, what are you doing? Just, just celebrate with your own people and just, just I, I don't care about whatever. That's um, what they always do at New York Stadium. They've all, they, they, every time they come here, it's, um, they go running straight across to little kids in family stand. It's, yeah. it's about their level, isn't it? I'm sure they're not watching to be honest with us. I don't, I, I don't care. You, I, 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 I nobody should. You know, we we, we all, uh, all of us as football supporters, whatever club you support, have to suffer this sort of behaviour from from a lot of clubs, not just them, but they particularly make a habit of of, of being imbeciles, don't they, at football matches mm. for whatever reason, and 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 seem to seem to find it as if it's some sort of badge of honour, whatever. Yeah. Clowns. <laughs> Moving on. Um, Josh Caswell said they've been watching too much Green Street. Probably won't repeat. Uh, John Rell says at least we haven't had technically six managers this season like Birmingham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's one hundred percent Chris Yeah, it is. 
Um, I want to get some ref praise, Danny. This is this is very, very rare, but I thought the referee had a very good game. It was an American Alex Chilowitz, is probably how you say it. Um, Paul Davis tweeted out pre-game that he's kind of on a fast track from America, like Jared Gillett has, was. The ref does again what I would help. Um, I think it was an easy game to referee. I don't think any contentious decisions, but I thought he managed the game really, really well. I can I can kind of see why he's on a fast track to the Premier League. Why, why English refs can't do that job is a a different question, which we won't be doing. Uh, but I thought we ref praise deserved when needed. Yeah, he's done all right for a yank, hasn't he? <laughs> um, but but no, on a serious note, like you said, he didn't have any uh, big decisions to make. Like there was no contentious penalty decisions or bookings or whatever. I don't think there were a booking until end of first half, was there? Uh, there weren't was... many at all. No, no, there weren't oh. many at all. Um, so yeah, he, he's. He's done all right, but I think he's done all right because there was nothing too out there to do. Hmm. You know, he's not like his, um, I forget the name at ref, but so, uh, he might be one at Plymouth podcast. He uh, tweeted out a clip of the referee that we've got on Friday. Um, and I think it was in Plymouth's last game. They missed a blatant foul on one of their players and opposition went and scored. Um, so it's like mm, that's going to be fun, but yeah, if, if he's on a if he's on a fast track um, through the AFL up to the Premier League, um, I personally would want to see him in a more um, fiery game to see how he handles it, mm. because there's a track record of some referees not being able to handle fiery games, and I think if you want to be a top level referee, you need to know how to handle it. All right, you've got the the cushion of VAR in the Premier League, but certainly in upper end at championship between say um if um Ipswich and Leeds were to play each other if it was earlier in the season um then that's the sort of game where you need to know how to keep your head uh, and to keep control of the game and Rotherham against Millwall wasn't really going to be one of those games I don't think but in terms of big decisions he did all right because he didn't have to make any but, but the little decisions he had to make whether it were like softer free kicks, um, little niggly fouls, etc. Yeah, we got them right, and he got the basics right, which is very, very important, I think. Yeah, I thought like Flo and managed it really well. Mick, do you want to give any, mm. any anything out to this? No, I think you're right. I think you're right. He had a bit of a period ten minutes into the second half where he had a bit of a brain fart and gave lots and lots of silly little fouls, mm. which he'd not been given. But but other than that, I thought I, I agree with. You. I thought he was a very very good ref. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, any other performances? Well, let's go back to this question earlier. Because we talked about Victor earlier, weren't we? we? Had a question from Michael Carnell. So he says, "Go on then, Matt, Danny, Mick, and Joy. Where do you rank Victor in terms of our goalkeepers? Had uh, had in his time since 1989, he will be at Michael's number one. Um, yeah, he had a good game, Mick. He had a very, very good game. He had a good game, but it's a Victor game, isn't it? It's just what you have, what you kind of expect from Victor." Uh, are we saying top top keeper you've seen, or you've seen more than more than me? Yeah, I mean, I've been. I don't know. I don't know when Joy started going. I started going early seventies. Um, the likes of Roy Tunks and Jim McDonough were the keepers that stuck out for me in my early years. Um, Mike Pollitt was probably one of the best keepers we've had. Ray Mountford was outstanding, uh, but Victor. He is the best that I've seen in a Rotherham United shirt without a question. Um, he is just top, top quality. So, yeah, for me, he's, he's the best that I've ever seen in my lifetime pulling a Rotherham United shirt. Yeah, well, I'm sure we'll have this conversation again in about a month or two's time when it confirms he's leaving to somewhere wonderful, Danny. But you've watched him a little bit less than me, so I assume that he is... He's, well, he's going to take some beating to get better than Victor at this club. He's going to take some beating because... He's, he's not perfect, as as no goalkeeper is. He's not perfect, but he is brilliant at basically everything he does. Yeah, um, I started properly watching Rotherham matches um, whilst Lee Camp was goalkeeper, I think. Um, and since then, Victor is head, shoulders, potentially knees as well, above the, the rest of the keepers that we've had. Um, so going back to you know the seventies, even before then to the sixties and the fifties, it's purely statistical for me. Mm. Um, and Victor is certainly up there as at least Rotherham's within Rotherham's top five best goalkeepers in history. 
you know, and that's going back to like Roy Ironsides uh, in the 60s and whoever else before then. Um, Victor's in the top five and I'm going to go out on a bold statement and say if Rotherham did have like a, a fully uh, fully committed Hall of Fame, Victor would be in it. Mm. He's, not, he's not been with us that long compared to some players like Mike Pollitt and Andrew Warrington were with us for longer. Mm. Um, but in terms of being Rotherham's number one starting goalkeeper over the recent years and just due to his athleticism, his reaction speed and his overall, you know, cat-like reflexes, to be fair, um, is at least top five best goalkeepers Rotherham United have ever had in our near enough hundred years to be in a football club. Mm. Um, Sheldon Stones' bottom rooms was OK. Um, Karish Caswell says for me, it's Victor, Rodak and I'd call him to say the penalty. Uh, you mentioned Lee Camp, Drummond says Lee, Lee the Cat Camp was a legend. He was a good keeper, Lee Camp. Very good keeper. Yeah. Was he? Um, not on Victor's level. Joy, are you? Is he? Is he the best for you? Well, I've been watching Rotherham since the late sixties, and <laughs> um, you should be saying now, "Oh, you don't look old enough." Uh, you don't, but... Joy. You're in here. <laughs> I had to promise it, though, guys. Come on, oh, yeah. give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um. I've been watching Rotherham since the late 60s and he's definitely in the top five, if not the top three for me. Mm. Um, it's difficult to say because it's a, it, it, there's lots of issues around it. It's about the personality, their skill set, and also the guys that are around them as well mm. as to what gets through mm -hmm. to them because they are the last line of defence. And like I said, he's definitely in the top five, if not the top three for me. And I've been going for 50 odd years now. So that's, that's a lot of keepers, mm. I would suggest. Yeah. That, yeah. you know, to be in the top three, I would suggest, for me mm -hmm. personally. We've always had quite good keepers, to be fair. We're not a club yeah. that's gone through spells of having poor keepers. No, I agree. Uh, it's never yeah. been a problem. Um, <laughs> you know, don't forget we had Matt Clark as well. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Know, we've had some really, really good keepers. Uh, mm. McAllister, you'll remember McAllister yes. Mitch, yeah. who used to box and cox with Mountfield, didn't he? And, yes. you know... Yes. We've had some good keepers. Hmm. Uh, you know, Ian Gray, he wasn't too bad when he yeah, was here in the early 80s, along with Pets, don't forget. Mm. But Martinez, World Cup winning well, goalkeeper. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't get no better than that, really, can you? That's true. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, Rodak, Slovenian international. Mm. We've had some cracking keepers at Rotherham. Yeah. It's mm. never been a position that's been problematic, I don't think. To no. be honest, but for mm. Victor being at least the top five, if not the top three, just is testimony to the guy and his endeavours while he's been a Rotherham player. Mm. Well done, mm. Victor. I'm, go I'm going to have to put another document together on. So, where does Victor compare to Rotherham United goalkeepers? Have like clean sheets, goals conceded, <laughs> amount of time that they've been at the club, that sort of thing. I think Victor's uh, probably the most exposed keeper we've ever had. I don't, I don't remember a keeper having to make so many saves. Um, mm. But then is he, is he making better saves where other people would have let him in? Is that why we're noticing the saves? Or is the defence just been poor? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Uh, Phil says Victor, Mountford, Alan Hill. Um, Steve Gunner says Ray Mountford as well. Just Crashwell thinks asking Vickers to replace Victor. Wait and see. Add that. Just thought of another one. Kelly Mohanlon. Yeah. Mm. I've yeah, heard that. <laughs> Uh, Sarah Johnson says Billy Mercer. Uh, mm. Josh Caswell says Dan Iverson. Yeah, Iverson and Rodak were brilliant. Emmy Martinez, they were brilliant keepers, but they went on to be better at other clubs than they were for us, which is, well... No, with the exception of Martinez, I mean, he's, he's not really done out since he left, has he? But, mm. you know, just going back to that Millwall game, one person we haven't mentioned and I think deserves a mention um, is, uh, is Hakeem Adolphin again. Mm. Uh, he was immense... Yeah. He was absolutely immense. Uh, he did make a couple of mistakes as we as we as he usually does, but he, he came back and sorted them out before it causes any problems. Um, mm. He was he was fantastic. Was it often? Mm. Yeah, he was, and that's against all of him. On his day, Michael Buffer is an excellent striker. He didn't get a, he didn't get a sniff, did he? On, no. On, on Monday. No. Um, yeah, he did. Anybody else you want to give a mention to from Monday? It wasn't an all-time classic performance, but. 
There was some, <laughs> there was some solid. It, it was good to have Bramwell back in there, Danny. I think Bramwell himself didn't have a particularly outstanding game, but he, I said to Mick when we were watching the game, it just gives you something else to think about. So because he's playing quite well, it gives a bit more room in midfield because they can't have the extra man and things such as that. It, the way Bramwell plays and the way he's with his pace, it just helps the rest of the team. Yeah, definitely. I think Bramall um, is also keen pushing the play downfield as well. Um, mm. He was sort of one of the uh, the locks in the chain of getting his downfield and actually getting balls into the box because he runs the channels, um, which we've not really had recently, to be fair. We saw a bit of it with Kioso when he came back from Peterborough, but obviously he's injured, so uh, we might not see it uh, until a couple of games down the line now. But with Bramall coming back, he's able to get down the pitch, get balls into the box. All right, they're not the most accurate thing in the world, but they still cause problems. Uh, and I think at times we were asking Sever Evan to do that when he's not uh, engineered to be like that. Um, mm. His position as left side of centre back potentially is more of a left back rather than a left wing back seems to suit him more. But I did notice something, and this is what's been brought up on Twitter a little bit. He did better when he moved him to the right hand side. What about yeah. Um, so maybe that's why we didn't bring in another right back when Kioso came back because Sever Evan's interchangeable. Um, maybe that's where he'll get deployed if he comes back. Who knows? Um, but to have Bramall back, again, if we play Revan on the right, Bramall can fill in a left wing back, left back, but also pushes down the pitch and get balls into the box. Um, it's a shame we're not having this conversation in November, if I'm being honest, but yeah. um, swings and roundabouts of football. But it might show us a... Um, a little bit of an insight into how Richardson wants to play next season when everyone's sort of coming back a little bit. Mm. Um, and if I'm being honest, I can see us without Jordan Hugel next season because we seem to be doing a bit better without him in the team. Yes, I'm not surprised. Um, John Hell says, in those surroundings, it feels like Danny needs to hold up a product and say he highly recommends it. Um, I've not got the Ben Tash though, have I? No, I can't. I can't take no. his players and off the Tash for it. <laughs> True, we'll get Ben back on for that. Mick, <laughs> one player played who everybody's been asking for on Monday and it didn't work out. Femi Sariki got his first, second start? He started the QPR, so his second start. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can see why he hasn't played because he looks, I don't know whether he's out of touch, rusty, or whether he's just not at this level yet. Um, but he had a he had a torrid afternoon. I thought Sariki. He down said torrid. I, I just don't think he, 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 didn't, he didn't impact the game, did he? He, he didn't really impact so him. much. Yeah, um, I think he, there's definitely a player in there. Without a shadow of a doubt, there's a player in there. Um, but I think that perhaps I think a League One um, season mm. would do him the world of good. Um, I, and I, you know, I, I, I look at us. We're going on League One, uh, League One. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I, I just don't think he's quite there. I don't think he's quite ready for Championship football yet. Mm. Um, he needs he needs some more experience. But uh, I, I'm sure there's a player in there. I am honestly. Mm. He might he might need games, but he just yeah, yeah. He just, he lost the ball a lot. He put in one or two crosses that were decent, mm. and there were probably three or four other ones that were less than decent. Um, so hopefully, hopefully it comes good for him as a, as a player. I'm sure um, it will. I'm yeah. Sure it will. He's, he's he's definitely got something there. I can see why nobody else in the championship took a risk on him though. Well, yeah, um, but I think, yeah. Um, Michael Arnell says, "Are we going to talk about the con? I think it means the contracts that have been mentioned for date today for Ollie and Hacks." Yeah, Joy. Um, Lee Mission says that those two are going to be offered con new contracts. Uh, it's the first bit of summer business that we're talking about. They are they they have another the essentially they've got, another, they've got an option to extend in the summer which we which we'll do anyway, um, but they're both no brainers really to try and get him tied down for longer because a dolphin could be if you wanted to you make him captain it could be the heartbeat of this football club for three four more years time to push us on back up to the championship and Ollie Ollie probably similar can continue with that heartbeat in the middle of the middle of the midfield as well. Yeah, I mean it, it is a no brainer, Matt. You're absolutely right, Hacks and Ollie. They're key, I think, uh, to keep those guys moving forward. And if they have got the one-year extensions, they will be uh, called upon, I would imagine. I would imagine. Um, going forward, whether they'd be willing to accept contracts, it, that's the moot mm -hmm. point, isn't it? I mean, 
were the contracts uh, discussion supposed to be happening earlier on in the season with Ollie, and mm. then it went quiet, and things were said on by Ollie that um, would led led you to believe that it was club the club that weren't talking to him rather than him not talking to the club. But who knows? His mm. agents speak, etc. But yeah. to my mind, it's a no-brainer. If we can uh, get contracts for both Hacks and Ollie, then yeah. I'm all for that. Whether we will, again, like I said, a bit of a moot point. Mm. Yeah, there's a, the issue with Hacks might be Mick, that he has had such a good season that we will obviously extend the contract. But if I'm a championship club that has got a little bit of money to spend, there's, he's got one year left in his contract. Some, there's going to be there's a player there. If you if you can convince yourself for a million quid, you're going to make a profit in a year's time on something like Akeem Adolphin. So that's the worry. I, I think I've... <laughs> Ollie's had less of a good season, hasn't he? Whereas yeah. Adolphin's had a really good season. So for me, it is a worry that Adolphin might leave this summer for, for some money. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. It'd be a, it'd be a tragedy if he did, but um, you know, we, we we could really do with him. He's a hell of a player, and I'd be I'd be going all out to make sure that we can get him on a longer deal, even if we end up selling him. Uh, I want him on a longer deal. Um, so he deserves to be playing at championship level. There's no doubt about it. Um, but well, I have to just. Bit time and see how those negotiations go, won't we? Yeah. Uh, John Mills says, if Derby come up, which is sadly looking likely, any fear those out of contract might end up in the Midlands? Mm. No. I'm not playing that. I could see Victor going there if they really? come up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're going to have to pay for him, and they'll. it'll depends whether their new manager will want it, doesn't it? <laughs> not, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I've thought this for a while. I just can't see... I can't see Paul Warren staying if they go up. I can't see him keeping him. I think they'll they'll go for someone else, a bigger name, once they become a bigger club again uh, in a bigger league. You know, I just I I, I can't see that. It's I, I might be wrong. I don't know, but I just it just feels I don't know. Don't feel right. I don't I I I don't think he'll stay. I think they'll get somebody else in personally. In which case, you know, it's all yeah yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it probably wouldn't make it wouldn't have any impact on it on us. Yeah, fair enough. Mixed conspiracy theory. Well, um, I don't know. Yeah, I've got, I've got some more as well if you want. But one well, trip? No, I am. Oh, okay. Give me a minute. <laughs> I'll think of some. <laughs> All right, let's move forward to the game on Friday night live on Sky. Uh, Plymouth Argyle come to town for a big, big game for Plymouth. A big, big game for their season. Uh, let's take off the ref watch because we've, we've had a few comments about this. Oliver Langford is the referee. Um, John's put in the comments earlier that he ref the Birmingham game on Monday had a really, really good game. Um, seeing is believing as well, said John. I ain't seen it. Um, so we'll see how that goes for Mr Langford. We're not. Has, has, has the, has, has the EFL or PGMOL got something against the Rotherham Plymouth fixture, Plymouth Rotherham fixture? They gave us no. Gavin Ward in the Plymouth game, in the, the away game at, to, at Home Park, and now, what? It's going off. What, I don't know. Now we've got Langford doing this one. You make a good point. I can't remember where Oliver Langford's been rubbish for us before, but I know for a fact I he can. has been rubbish. Go on. I can tell you, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Virtually every game is refereed. Okay, I don't narrow it down for me. You don't need to. Okay, he did referee the Leeds game on telly at home, where he gave out zero yellow cards, mm. um, which is neither here nor there, I suppose. Um, Danny, like I said, it's a big game for Plymouth. Bear in mind the context of the season; they're changing manager. It's probably their biggest game of the season because if they lose and you lose to Rotherham. Where where do you really go from there as as a Plymouth? You've got the new management team, which is an old set. We might come into that in a minute. Um, but we've got to be sort of looking at this game. I, if I'm Lee Rich, I'm looking at this game, thinking right, if we can be aggressive, these might fold because they're just because they're in a terrible run of form. This that the other. This is another opportunity for us to pick up another win potentially. Anyway, well, you say <clears throat> where would you be if you are in a relegation fight and you lose to what Rotherham? Probably Lee one. Um, but yeah, it, it seems a weirdly strange decision for them to set the manager with six games left because <clears throat> they're not going to have the biggest impact in six games, realistically. Mm. Um, unless you're Neil Warnock and they've uh, pied him off. Um, because we were talking to 
uh, talk sport, I think, <clears throat> where he said that, you know, they weren't even considering it, he weren't in contention, but he would have helped them out. But it's like, well, they're lost. Um, who have they brought in as the new manager? So, their director of football, director of football has stepped in. Yeah. Hip kiss. Right, so, right, so we're going to win 3 0, aren't we? Which no, is all. No. Um, I, 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 some of the comments might be able to tell you, I don't remember a director of football ever stepping into a management role as a caretaker. I can't remember. I, mm. I didn't think that was their, their role. I thought it was the assistant or coach's role. It, it, that seemed odd to me. Yeah, that, that seems very odd. Maybe there's something beneath the surface there at Plymouth, but. Um, I think if you are Plymouth coming into this game, um, they will be looking for a win more than anything uh, because they'll obviously want to stay up. We're near enough gone other than goal difference. Uh, well, because of goal difference, rather. Um, Just remember that, Danny. Well, so when we meet Plymouth, when we get a plus one on goal difference, they also get a minus one. So every goal's worth two in terms of the goal difference. One. Yeah, that's that's very true. Yeah. Um and it goes back to what we said um, we said earlier. Imagine going down on goal difference um, <laughs> and how close it was. Um, but now I, I, I was sort of expecting Plymouth to have brought someone in, and that's why they sacked the manager straight away. But yeah, if they haven't, I don't think they'll get the new manager bounce. If I'm being honest, mm-hmm. especially if it's the director of football coming in. Um, so it might might open the playing field a little bit and give us a chance to play a bit more. Um, but I'm not expecting us to uproot any trees, if I'm being honest. Uh, we might be marginally better than the Millwall game because we've got a bit of confidence in us. Hmm. Um, but, you know, we never lose on Sky. So We lost this season to Bristol City, Phelps. Yes. <laughs> we're moving on. Okay, okay. We, we never lose on Sky until I'm not at the game. There you go. Fair enough. We'll take that. Somewhere else says they were care they had they, they did uh, this I think it's Neil Juice I think they they were sure caretaker when Schumacher left they got four draws I think a decent decent enough record um, yeah I mean, we, a lot's changed for Plymouth Joyce we we played them obviously in I think December which I think was Schumacher's last game and when we played them they weren't a particularly good team I wouldn't say they were full of technically wonderful players but they had something about them they had that fight and that will unwillingness to sort of lay down which you kind of need to to stay up. And obviously, it seems that Schumacher's kind of taken that with them, and they've dropped like a stack. There's been two or three times this season where I thought Plymouth are done. They're, they're fine. They're, they've stayed up. But they, they've sleepwalked into a proper relegation fight here, and they're the one, as the outside, I'm thinking, God, they're, they're the ones that are probably going to drop in. Yeah, I, I agree. I thought that myself. I thought even a, you know, a few games ago, I thought, oh, they're, mm. they're out of it. It's between you know the four... But the three that are down there at the moment, plus Millwall and Birmingham, still flirting. Can't make their minds up whether they want to go up or down again, mm. John. Um, but um, no, they, they have uh, since. I mean, I, I think they were a team that were in that uh, the identity as Schumacher as a player, weren't they? If you know what mm. I mean. Yeah. The way he used to play, uh, all blood and guts and thunder, and with with some skill. I'm hastening mm. to add in there as well. And I think that was how Plymouth were last season in League One and how they started off this season up until the point when he moved on. And they, even then, they were they were holding their own, weren't they? Mm. I mean, I'm not seeing yeah. much of them apart from the snippets that you see, if you can be bothered to watch the ITV football show, which I can't anymore because it's so <laughs> dreadful. But, um, yeah, I thought they were holding their own. And it's only in the last sort of... T- last month or so that I thought oh mm. Plymouth are working the way down which is, was unexpected but and then obviously with them uh getting rid of the uh new well the relatively new manager and getting Juice Nip in to do the director of football in to do the caretaker role to the end of the season as you say I, I don't know what you know if he's done that role before then maybe it does make sense maybe mm. there's a financial um aspect to it as well and they're sort of hedging the bets to see which league they're likely to be in next season before yeah. they make a, de- a decision on that and i suppose that the director of football will know this squad and the setup there already so mm. it's l- less of an upheaval less of a dynamic i don't know uh, perhaps some of the Green Army that are watching this will be able to fill in the blanks for us. Um, but it, it is a weird decision to 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 kick the guy out uh, with six games to go. 
um, and it could work out, could work out for them, it might have the opposite effect and mm. they could carry on the downward spiral. But mm. like you say, I agree, Matt, I think it is their biggest game of the season. And I, I suspect Plymouth fans will agree with me. Why the hell did Sky change it to a Friday when they've got to schlep all the way up from bloody Plymouth to Rotherham on a Friday night? I mean, I'd be well cheesed off to the nth degree about that. I mean, I'm cheesed off anyway, because as London Millers, we were down to sponsor this game. And obviously, with them changing it to Friday, mm. London Millers can't get up to sponsor the game. So that's our opportunity to sponsor the club this season gone. So I can totally empathise with anybody of the green hue that are schlepping up to Rotherham on a Friday night, particularly mm. on the end of an Easter holiday weekend with kids that... You know, it's not going to be much fun, is it? So, no. and, and particularly given, you know, the gravity of the situation that they find themselves in playing Rotherham. Mm. Yeah, it's one of those that I imagine if you're a Plymouth fan, if this was a Saturday afternoon, they'd have not far off filled out that away. And mm. because because of how big the game is, Joe's in the comments saying there'll be just, just about a thousand. That's still a hell of a journey, well hell, of a, hell of an effort yeah, on a Friday that's night. That's decent, that, for a Friday, that. Yeah. Well um, done, guys. That was the... Uh, yeah, we hope you stay up. We don't win tomorrow, but I hope you stay up. Um, Mick, it's not, we're down anyway. So I, I, when I say the word opportunity, I was meaning in terms of the game itself. But is this an opportunity to get a couple of wins, get win back to wins? Because we've been in their shoes in terms of in free fall for most mm. of the season. So yeah. we know that if a team that's in free fall go behind an early goal, then they can crumble like a worst deck of cards you've ever seen. We, you've, we've got to be. Aggressive and proactive. If we're if we're not going to do it tomorrow night, when are we going to do it again for the rest of the season? Well, exactly, absolutely. Um, this is part of this needs to be part of the what we talked about quite a lot on this podcast about bloody and a few noses. You know, we 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 managed to do that against them on Saturday, and uh, we need to be trying it again on Friday night. They 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 are on current form um, and managerless they are there for the taking for a team that's willing to to have a go our problem's been that we haven't been willing to have a go all season have we you know mm -hmm. so um but yeah it's an opportunity it's an opportunity to get a back-to-back -back wins uh you know which we haven't done since i will have no idea when we got last got a back-to-back win just cool. stoke last season thanks harry wow. um so yeah I, yeah, it's a game we're going to be. We, we, it's about confidence as well, you know. You could see the relief on on a lot of the players after Saturday. Mm. You know, they, they, it meant a lot to them, at, despite what some of the clowns on on social media say. It quite clearly does mean something to them, um, and and hopefully they'll take some confidence from that. Confidence from the fact that they are capable of beating these teams. You know, if you're just a little bit more adventurous, which is. Which is what we we tried in that second half against Millwall, and uh, and it came off. So, yeah, we, we've got a chance. I, I do agree with Joy though about the changing of the game. The, the time is just okay. it's an absolute disgrace from, from Sky Sports. A disgrace. Having said um, that, if you're going to pick Plymouth, where is okay to change a Plymouth away uh, game? Because it's miles away from anywhere. Yeah, it might be, it might be, but it's not 500 miles plus, is it? You know, I, I, I think more you know, appropriate for a Saturday night. More than anything, well, maybe we don't like that. Yeah, you know, they, 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 they can put against Bristol, Cardiff, Swansea. They're they're, they're closer, significantly closer geographically than, the, than than we are. It doesn't have to be on a Friday night, you know. So now it's it's a disgraceful decision from Sky, but then we expect nothing less from them, do we? Gary, for next season, get ready for next season when there's going to be so many games moved. So. Yeah, 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 absolutely. This, this is this is like a, a taste of what we've got to expect from next uh, in next season. Well, if there are any benefits from getting relegated from the championship, that might be one of them. There'll still be three games per weekend moved, I think, in League One. Well, I think right. maybe not, maybe I'm, not. <laughs> because we're probably going to be at the right end of the table. You'd assume if if we're we're going to be where we want to be, they've got a lot of them are going to be us, aren't they? Us and Wrexham, obviously. Yeah, Rexham. obviously Wrexham. Yeah, they'll be on every week. Bless them. Um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna say something. I've, I've lost what it was. Never mind. Um, let's do some predictions. Oh, somebody asked about team news for Plymouth. We haven't got any team news. We we're not doing sky reports between now and end of the season because it felt a bit pointless. Always going. How exactly are you going to beat us this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just um, turn up. 
Yeah, exactly, basically. Um, so we will bring that back next season. I'm not going to stop doing scout report because I think it was good and useful, but I thought it was still a bit pointless between now and end of the season. So that's uh, that's that. Um, but they, bear in mind, they do have Morgan Whitaker. I think he's top scorer, second top scorer, second or third top scorer. He's, a, he's an excellent player who will not be with Plymouth if they're going to have the League One next season, certainly. Um, they mentioned Divine, who, who was, uh, was sent off in the last game. Uh, so th there is a few players in that. But, um, we'll go from there. Danny, give me a score prediction. Um, well, like I say, I think if Whitaker turns up, we'll be in trouble. But um, I, I honestly think that given the circumstances of Plymouth, uh, like with the director of football being their interim manager and uh, the nature of the fight and how we're effectively down by goal difference, regardless of if we win every single game this season, I have a weird suspicion we are going to turn up with it being on Sky. So I'm going to say 1-0 to Rotherham. Look at this. We won one game and people are getting giddy. <laughs> um, Joy, what do you reckon? Well, we, if we can't get giddy after winning really one game, then the, <laughs> we might as well pack it in, haven't we? <laughs> do you know, and we even scored two goals as well. I mean, that's... Yeah. You know, so I'm going to do a mick and I'm going to go 2-0 to Rotherham. <laughs> Like not it. to. Why right. not? Mick, 2 0. 2 1. 2 1 of them. We went back to 2 1. No, I don't know. Good point, actually. Good point. A clean sheet for Victor would be nice, wouldn't it? Clean oh, sheet yeah. for win last time. He's had, he's had one clean sheet. So. What? He had a clean sheet against Huddersfield, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So now he needs a clean sheet and a win. So 2 0. I'll stick with, I'll stick with Joy on that. Got you. 2 0. I will go 1 0 as well. I'm going to copy Danny. Um, we'll go, where are we? Comments. Uh, IFC says 2 0 to us. Joshua Caswell says 1 0. Steve Grinnell says no, 1 1. Chris Tether says 2 1. John Morell says 2 0 to the Millers and Langford to give us a penalty and Mick to praise the ref in the post match reaction. Oh, uh, says 2 1. Joe Argyle says 3 1. Uh, Joe, the Argyle fan, says 3 1. Uh, he says this side has a point to prove and will be highly motivated for this. You'd expect so. I, I yeah. would certainly expect so. Uh, Tobias says 1 0 uh, if you can win when I'm not there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good point, so, actually. I really expect this team to turn, our team to turn up on Friday. And there's a couple of bits to, that are important. John mentioned in the comments, sort of joking that we hope we turn up. We've got a bit of a thing. We've got to make sure we keep trying. There's no point putting kids and things like in these games. You've got to keep trying because this is a massive game for Plymouth, but it's also a massive game for Huddersfield and Birmingham and Sheffield Wednesday. and when we play Birmingham in a few weeks, time, that's a big game for everybody else down there. So we've got to make sure, I don't want to use the integrity of the league because that's a not really a real word, bear in mind all the rules that are flying about in the Football League. Um, but it's important that we try and get a win. Uh, we will try and do an instant reaction Friday night. Mick is abandoning us uh, for Friday night uh, to watch some other football. Um, so Mick won't be on the instant reaction. I will make him watch the game in full before Sunday, so don't worry about that. I don't know what else this weekend, I'm sure. Um, and then yeah, we will try and do an instant reaction. But I'm not, you know, we'll see if we get a camera person, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> we may be lucky a camera person, uh, but we'll see. Anything else, boys and girls, we want to mention tonight? I think we've done an hour and eight minutes out of that win. That's how giddy we are. We've gone long because we won a game. <laughs> um, anything else we need to mention? I assume you'll be doing an emergency podcast if we win on Friday, then. <laughs> no. No, we <laughs> well, should we do the relegation permutation, shouldn't we? So, if we lose or draw, we're down officially. If we win, we survive for the time being. But if Plymouth, Huddersfield or Sheffield Wednesday win, we will then be relegated on Saturday. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday, I think, have got QPR. Huddersfield have got somebody. I can't remember what it is now. I think uh, it'd be nice if for us to be relegated whilst we're not actually watching our own football. I think that'd be nice. I think it'd be nice to, for us not to relegate ourselves, if that makes mm. sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody else to do it. To, as long as it's it. not purely Wednesday winning that relegates us, it's fine. Oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. Yeah, we should relegate ourselves rather than getting Wednesday to do it for us. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that. We don't want that. Um, but yeah, those those are the permutations. And then we've got another game Tuesday. So if we don't get relegated Saturday, we'll get relegated Tuesday away at West Brom. Um, if we win on Saturday, if we win on Saturday, bear in mind, we'll remind everybody, Tom's bet this season 
he said we would win three games back to back at a fifty pound charity bet. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah. This, is, this is, I think, this is his last chance, really, isn't it? Yeah, if we win weird. on, if we are going to get Tom on Sunday. Either way, if we win on on Saturday, on Friday, sorry, um, I think you might, Tom might be getting a bit giddy that we might actually get three in a row. Um, but we'll also have to wait a second. Anything else, guys, that we want to mention? No. No. Cool. Thank you all for being with us. Um, please make sure you have subscribed on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, give the video a like as well. We will be back. There should be an instant reaction, which will probably be up Friday night. Worst, worst case scenario, we'll be back Sunday evening, which will be the review of the Plymouth game and look ahead to West Brom. If you're on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever else you may be listening on the audio podcast, make sure you follow and uh, subscribe or subscribe and give us a five star rating when where it allows you to do so. Uh, thank you for being with us, Joy. It's, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for having me again, guys. And Danny, thank you, mate. Are you going to upgrade your beer next time? Is there a level above Madri you're aiming for, or are you just sticking there for now? Oof. Um, what do you think about Cruz Campo? I like Cruz Campo. Mm. Not, not a bad shout, but it's nice to know that I've been on the podcast in a greater number of locations, and we've had managers this season. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, where's your next one coming from? You're going to like in, I don't know. Well, it depends on what I'm doing Sunday, to be fair. Okay, so that's that's, <laughs> that's 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 a tease if everybody wants to join the show on Sunday that Danny could be anywhere. Mm. Uh, yeah, Mick, uh, I hope you enjoy your other football on Friday night. Yes, so do <laughs> I. <laughs> you think so? Very very enthusiastic for that. I, I should be. I shall have one eye on the uh, on my live score. Okay, but only one. Only one. Fair enough. Oh. Um, thank you for being with us. It's a pleasure as always. Thank you for being with us, and as always. Up the Millers. Up the Millers. Up the Millers. It's a wild, wild through a goal. Slotsy beyond Fodringham. And the Millers are in front in the South Yorkshire Derby. And for the first time in 42 yes. years, yes. Rotherham United win at Bramall Lane. On the edge of the box, Duffy. He can hit them, and he does. Oh! Secured their championship status for next season.